the receiving end as well of you know those who are not necessarily tolerant within our communities i think you're right to put that on the line we've got enough challenges from the rest of society without pulling each other apart within the community um, and largely that largely that doesn't happen but we don't need it when we've got enough uh, we've got enough wars to fight um, with with the rest of the world um, so absolutely well, I mean, I've heard all this about accommodation about mental health and sometimes I believe that you know when, when we're speaking to each other that we have the stats we all know the stats we just have yeah. to you know be human to each other and be free with each other you know because mm. at the end of the day life is very very short you know and 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 again it's really about empowering young travelers it's about empowering all traveler people within in ireland and in england and again the media is not very friendly to the traveler no, community no, you know no, and i would love no. to stress that that it's everything but friendly if anything the media is part of uh, the inequalities that we go through on a daily basis so i'll end with that one point if that's okay uh, absolutely and i think what i've seen over the certainly the 13 years that i've been involved in the traveler movement in england is um it, it might not feel like it to the younger ones. I'm 58 now, but, you know, we've got the young people coming through. We've got Chelsea's and Chrissy's and all those people and people like yourselves. The you younger ones are absolutely, you know, you are you are going from strength to strength and you you're giving us all hope. And I've got to say there were times over the last couple of decades where we've actually thought, is, is are we breaking through? I never thought in a million years, you know, we'd see the, you get into the, somebody like us get into the position that you're in. It's not, you know, it's not 100% the solution, but we are moving into, and I think the big thing I've always talked about is you have to be in the system. And I know there's a place to be outside the system and smashing it in and smashing down the walls, but there's a place for working your way through the system and being part of the system and imperfect and racist system though it is, but we, we, we got to do both and we need activists working from every angle. And, and that's why you're so inspiring, Eileen. Because and I do think, yeah, Pauline, just in that, no, but I'll stop speaking now. No, I no. do think that, like, no senator is going to stand up in the um, in in the house and be racist when there's a woman there that's from uh, from the traveller community. And for me, uh, Pauline, you know, like in February, I decided to go for this uh, run, and I had that relationship with people, and it's everything but being big headed. I'm at my yeah. core of my work is a community development worker, and that's mm. to empower people. And I seem to see up for grabs. And I, it wasn't mm. about me even getting like you know, if I thought for a moment I could I support know. another traveler to get that say, and they would get that say, well, then yeah. that's what I would have done, but it wasn't possible at that time, you know. And it was about that one seat, it was about being able to break down barriers for us as a community, but most importantly, for a wider society. A lot of the time we, we have issues within, yes, but we have to understand these issues come from being oppressed constantly all of the time. Absolutely, it's a strategic decision. And I've said it before, don't get mad, get even. We are mad and we are angry about all the injustices, but you have to be strategic. Standing there, you know, being either a bleeding heart or Mrs. Angry, it does not necessarily make change. You you have to have a strategy. You have to move. You have to work within the system, within. And it, it galls us to work within a racist system, but to, we do... We, there is only one way to do it and that is that is the way we do it and I, I'm very proud of you we're all proud of you thank you from Hillary Norfolk GRT you're so inspirational Karen Ross Buckinghamshire very inspiring thank you from Omar to everyone um, from Margaret Greenfields um, brilliant talk Eileen etc um, you know we felt we were banging our heads against the wall 20 30 years ago <sighs> You know, it, it is, we are breaking through and take heart, everybody, from us oldies. You are, you young ones are definitely breaking through. It is a, it is a battering ram that needs to come back again and again. It's not a single activity, but uh, just, you know, I inspire you to keep, to keep going, really. We do have questions. 
um, a little bit of time for a couple of questions if you're available to take a couple of questions, I Eileen. Does anybody have a specific question for Eileen? We're having masses of wonderful um, uh, comments, um, but I'm interested to see if there are any specific questions. Not like this conference to be shy. I'm just wondering, did you always feel like this, Eileen? Did this mean here from LGT London, London Gypsies and Travellers? I just, as an Irish traveller woman myself, um, I'm a campaigner for something like in your old role. I just wanted to know, did you always feel that passion as a child growing up? Yeah, see, I'll, I'll tell you where I kind of, I'll tell you where I came from. Mummy died when I was 10 and uh, there was nine of us in it all together and my father and ever since then and then just being grown up with some of those oh. first memories of my mother being uh, going through uh, people following us in shops and following us around the road because we were travelers you know even to the guards pulling us in because we were travelers and that, them kind of memories were very tough for me and then um you know, it was like I wanted to be a nurse, actually, but I didn't do biology in school. I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> so I uh, ended up uh, here. But I, then I just worked in the Irish Traveller Movement for a little while, the National Traveller Women's Farm. And if I'm honest with you, it's just about being able to care for people. And it's, it's, you know, and I always say that, but the passion, yeah, the passion comes. And I was the angry young traveller woman who would, handcuff herself to, 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 to some gate because of a protest or being very feisty when it comes to inequalities that face our community. So I was very angry. And I think that, you know, you can actually come into the system and be part of the problem or you can come into the system and be part of the solution, you know, and it's up to you, uh, up to us as individuals to decide what we want to do and what, what side of the fence we want to be on. But no, I always... I love breaking down inequalities that 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 face uh, marginalised people in society. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Does anybody want to bring a question for? There's one from Hannah. Hannah Swirsky, and it says, "Thanks so much, Eileen, for a great speech. What specific barriers did you face when first getting into politics and standing for election?" Uh, Good question. Actually, a really good question. You know, I never even thought I'd even run for elections until February, and the elections was the 16th of March. Uh, but the Senate, is, yeah, the Senate is a little bit different, so you can actually decide a few months before, a few weeks beforehand. Again, I only came out of postnatal depression. I was sick of the world, sick of being feeling down, and sick of not like. So I just said, you know, something. There's a seat up for grabs. And as a community development worker, the aim is to get the state. And that's what I did. But I was interested in politics from a young enough age. Like my father couldn't read or write, but he'd always be, he'd be able to tell you who the next president was going to be or who the next Taoiseach was going to be or which way the voting was going to go. And Lord mercy upon him, he sent me down when I was 18 to vote for the wrong politician. <laughs> that politician that he liked it so uh, today I probably wouldn't vote for that politician but it was a politician that he believed in and I went down and thinking I was brilliant to go down and vote you know I wouldn't say that I, I wouldn't say that when I was 12 or 13 I wanted to grow up and be a politician or even at 18 you know I had ambitions I at one point I wanted to escape from it all I was 25 years of age when I and I know people <coughs> might find this very hard to believe but I was 25 years of age when I was when I accepted that I'm just as good as anybody else and I'm a traveler woman you know and it wasn't that us travellers wasn't good enough for society about hiding my identity going into pubs going into clubs I was I was fucking tired of it excuse me language of just hiding all of the time so I just you know, it was it was realizing at 25 that who I was and be proud of who I was, even though there are big inequalities in society. And for me, that's what I, that that's what I was it was that sense of pride within my own community that made me go on into politics and again breaking down the barriers. Thank you, Eileen. You've been to two universities at least, um, brilliant and. Um, 
and a lot of people here have been kind of also the first in our families to perhaps go to university. What what do you think? Um, a question from Omar Khan about why do you think what do you think universities and colleges could do better uh, to ensure that travellers um, gypsies succeed in higher education? It's first and foremost for a lot of travellers, uh, um, uh, like you know the poverty rate and stuff within within our community. It's uh, uh, grants. Uh, financial support also maybe some uh, people might need emotional support you know that we never talk about uh, some of the one-to-one uh, -one sessions around uh, whatever the subject is because you have to remember we're not academics we didn't come from academic academia families and everything else that goes with it. Why we've got some doctors within our uh, community, Dr. Hannah McGindley is a brilliant, uh, uh, a brilliant uh, doctor uh, um, and her, uh, she did uh, her doctorate on education and access and education and, and some of the inequalities that travellers face within the education system. So we are extremely smart people but we don't have the history of going to universities and completing uh, completing school you know secondary school so I, I I would say that you give you you you, you meet the young traveler person where they're at and give them as much support as as possible and you know every day there's going to be a problem within no matter what community you come from, there's going to be a wedding, a death, or a funeral, or christening, or something that will stop you from doing what, what you need to do as, as a person. But just remember that today is a christening, next week it might be a wedding, and there's always going to be something, but sometimes you have to put yourself first, you know, and put yourself down for universities. If you get to places, be open with the access officers, and, you know, we can fail so many off. We can fail so uh, so very often, but you're never a failure until you give up. And that's always my message to uh, young uh, travellers who's in university. As you said, I went to, I went to Trinity College. <laughs> I absolutely hated Trinity College, didn't get the supports that I needed in Trinity, went to Bally Farmington, did a PLC course, that was a lovely course, I enjoyed that, and then I went and worked, and then I went back and got a degree, but to be honest as well, like, you know, we have different ways of learning, we have, like, I would be very skilled socially and um, emotionally, but while I wouldn't be an academic, you know, that kind of way. So I, I, I think uh, college is important if, if a person wants to go to college, but also if a person chooses not to go to college and wants to take another good career path for themselves, that they should be able to do that as well. Thank you. Um, just a huge thank you. We're going to um, end your um, remarkable um session now uh, we'd love to see you every year at our conference um, in some form uh, because you you know there's so much more that we want to talk to you about and hear about about your experience but you know we all follow you on Twitter uh, <laughs> we've followed you we we support you um, we're here for you and and you're here for us so thank you very very much uh, on behalf of the traveler movement for for for, for what you do and for uh, for being the inspiration that you are Thank and after you. the pandemic when it does end because we have to believe there will be an end to this crazy yeah. pandemic when it ends we'll go over and visit the, the traveler movement yeah. absolutely you're very absolutely. welcome very well you would be more than welcome thank you so after that wonderful uh, start to the conference 